What is the best computer setup for running ProPresenter in worship? In this video, I'm gonna break down in detail for you my 10 favorite components for building a robust and reliable computer graphics machine. This is gonna be the machine that runs your lyrics and motion backgrounds for worship, sermon slides, a confidence monitor for your band, as well as it's gonna send lower thirds lyrics to your live stream and other video content to distributed video destinations around your church. Maybe you have a TV in your lobby that you wanna have scrolling announcements. Computer graphics can get very demanding in a church environment, especially as your church grows from small to midsize or larger. So in this video, I wanna set you up for success to scale and grow that video system. Real quick, go to churchfront.com forward slash toolkit for all of our gear recommendations for the local church worship and production ministry. We've bundled together our favorite recommendations of gear and AV solutions that are tested. They work great for churches and we wanna save you a ton of time and research. So go check out that toolkit and learn more. Ingredient number one for a computer graphics system is an obvious one. It's the computer itself. We recommend using a Mac mini. The amount of power they pack, even in the base model Mac Mini, is incredible. It's plenty sufficient for most church environments for running lyrics and graphics and other videos for worship. If you're going to be running a high quantity of screens from this computer, and when I mean high quantity, I'd say anything beyond three unique screens, and you have to count the computer monitors that are plugged into the computer, which might already count for one or two screens, uh, so you can actually operate the computer. Then you have a display for your congregation, whether it's a projection system or it's an LED screen for them to see the content. You might have stage display screen, you might have a lobby screen. If you're gonna start running lots of screens, that's when it is worth getting a better, more powerful version of the M4 Mac Mini. If you wanna play it safe and future-proof yourself a bit with scaling up your video system and having the power to have more outputs, I would go with this version here, the 899 version that has a 10 core CPU, GPU, and additional RAM, as well as some additional storage. I think it's worth to have a little bit more than the uh, default 256 gigabytes of storage because a graphics machine might have to hold a decent amount of graphic uh, files, whether that's images or videos that could quickly uh, start to take up the hard drive space on this computer. Yes, you can get by with a less expensive Mac mini, but be aware if you start increasing the amount of video outputs from the computer, or if you're gonna start loading a bunch of other apps onto the computer, you're going to probably face some performance issues. If you wanna beef it up even more with additional GPU and graphics processing, especially if you have a lot of outputs going on, then I would opt for the M4 Pro Mac Mini. If you have budget, I'm not gonna try to talk you out of getting a Mac Studio, but in my opinion, it's kind of overkill for this application. The, the M4 Mac Mini performs very well in the majority of church environments. <clears throat> Actually, but Jake, I can just build my own custom gaming PC to run ProPresenter, and your Mac and your Sony expansion chassis, you're, you're all cool and all, but I can put in unlimited PCIe cards in my custom PC, and I can have 65 teraflops worth of RAM and 54 petabytes of storage. In fact, it's going to allow me to run ProPresenter with 12 4K displays, and I can play Flight Simulator during the service on my custom PC. You know, if you want to do that, if that floats your boat, that's totally fine. For most church situations, Mac is always the better route for your computer setup. We've had situations where clients have tried to use a PC. Maybe they got a really super powerful specced out gaming PC or something crazy. It just doesn't play well with ProPresenter. No matter how much ProPresenter tries to say they play well with PC, we've never seen it be consistently reliable. Up next, you're going to want to have a place to put your computer. We believe strongly at Churchfront that churches should have the top-notch professional integration with all of their AV equipment, including computers. That's why we like to rack mount computers in equipment racks. This is gonna look different and custom at every church, but the tool we like using to rack mount and secure computers, especially if you have multiple Mac minis, is the new Sonnet Rack Mac Mini. It is a 2U rack mount system, and you can fit three Mac minis in it, and it has the power button on the front so you don't have to press the power button on the bottom of the computer. I also recommend just keeping your computers on pretty much the majority of the time. It's good to restart them once in a while, but when you're trying to remote into your computer, 
just keep it on so that you can remote log on to the computer, you can edit stuff, you can work on ProPresenter. Uh, it's just gonna be much more convenient and these computers, they're gonna be fine if they're on all the time. My third recommendation is the Sonnet Echo 3 rack mount expansion chassis. The expansion chassis is a really incredible tool to allow you to start using PCIe cards alongside of your Mac mini. And you'll see in a moment why these PCIe cards are so powerful. This chassis allows you to use up to three PCIe cards for lots of additional inputs and outputs for USB and video, as well as network. You could also put additional storage on your computer with SSD cards in here. There's lots of options and customization with an expansion chassis. Recommendation number four are the PCIe cards that I would recommend putting into the expansion chassis. You've got a Decklink Duo 2, as well as a Sonnet Allegro USB. These are two of my favorites, but beware, you want to customize these to your specific needs. If your church is trying to do 4K video, then don't use these ones. There's a different Decklink Duo that you want to use. That's why at Churchfront, when our premium members are wanting to spec out a system like this, we can hop on a call with them and help them walk through those details. So if you're wanting to build a system like this and work out those details, become a member today. So you can go to the Sonnet store and browse all of the products available from Sonnet Tech to see the types of PCIe expansion cards you can put in the computer. And this allows you to kind of nerd out with the custom build of your computer. Uh, and the Thunderbolt technology is what really enables this because you're gonna have one Thunderbolt cable that goes from your Mac mini into the expansion chassis and then it opens up a whole world of different input and output cards for your computer. The reason we like tools like the Decklink Duo is you can see it gives us SDI video outputs directly from ProPresenter. So when you open up ProPresenter for a video screen selection and output, you're gonna see the Decklink Duo as an option, and then you're not dealing with the computer's built-in HDMI or Thunderbolt ports for those displays. Because if we're trying to build a professional, robust AV solution, you don't wanna be going from HDMI or uh, Thunderbolt or USB out into some sort of adapter or dongle, then into a converter, into SDI to get to your video switcher or to get to your projector, especially when we're running video over long distances in a church, it's very common. The best way to do that is SDI coax cable. So this really cleans it up that straight from the computer, we can pull the video signal from an SDI BNC connector. And these USB ports are also very useful, especially if you're going to use this machine maybe to run LightKey and you want to plug in a USB dongle that only has like a USB-A cable option on it. And you just want to have the additional ports there and not take up all the little ports uh, that are in the back of the Mac Mini itself. The fifth recommendation I have is the Sonnet Duo Moto Expansion Chassis Rack Mount Solution. That's a very long phrase and description for it, but what it does is you'll see here, uh, you can actually place the expansion chassis with your PCIe cards, go in the Duo Moto, and then that's gonna be rack mountable like what you see here in this photo. And this top photo is the back of the M4 Mac Mini Rack Mac. So you get three computers here. And then this is what it looks like when the M4 Mac Minis are racked on top of the, the Duo Moto right here. What's neat about this configuration, again, when I'm thinking about scalability and a church ministry growing, it allows room for additional computers. Maybe you don't need three computers now, but a lot of the full AV installs we do, there, we have at least three computers that we need to run ProPresenter, uh, maybe an audio machine, and then maybe a video switching machine. And we have three, three computers tends to be a really sweet spot number for most systems. And then you'd have two spaces here, maybe two of those computers could benefit from using an expansion chassis uh, with a Thunderbolt connection and having that whole host of other input and output devices that I talked about with those PCIe cards. Again, this is pro level stuff. This is not super budget friendly stuff. If you want a very budget friendly pro presenter setup, just get a base model M4 Mac mini. Sonnet also makes this $55 Mac cuff mini. So you can, you know, neatly place it maybe underneath the, uh, the desk at your workstation. And then you can use the built-in Thunderbolt ports and USB ports on the Mac itself. And this is ideal if maybe you have one or two displays maximum, you're trying to send content to You're a very small church and you just don't have that demanding of AV systems yet. 
you could start here and you could scale up over time. But I'm telling you, as someone who's been through the situation of a, of a growing ministry and trying to scale things up and helping a lot of churches grow through this, this is the solution they usually end up at. And because your computer and Thunderbolt expansion chassis are rack mounted, nice and clean in an equipment rack, that's where you need the next device, which is a KVM, which stands for keyboard, video, and mouse. And there's lots of different types of KVMs out there. You have a budget, simple KVM like the AV Access one right here. This is a point-to-point -point connection from the transmitter end, which is at the computer in the rack. Then you have a receiver end that's going to be at the workstation in your tech booth, and that's going to be where you plug in your keyboard, mouse, and monitor. It's kind of like an extender for your keyboard, mouse, and monitor. Not kind of. It is. It's literally what it says on the KVM. My seventh recommendation is a simple 24 inch LG monitor. It is a 1080p monitor because we are often specking KVMs that just do 1080p. I've never been in a situation running pro presenter where I'm like, wow, I really wish I was watching this in 4k or some crazy resolution. doesn't really have an impact on the performance of the computer or the operator. 1080p is a great value option for this type of setup. My eighth recommendation is the Stream Deck. The Stream Deck's a very powerful device. You can start assigning these buttons to various features within ProPresenter or maybe an ATEM video switcher so or even Light Key. So it's very handy to have a Stream Deck at the workstation for your Lyrics operator. Number nine, I recommend the Macaulay keyboard and mouse, and I recommend the large print keyboard. This is the Ergo mouse, and they're relatively inexpensive. The mouse is 20 bucks, keyboard's maybe $70. It's large print letters and it's backlit. So it's very easy for someone at a production machine to like see the keyboard and what they're doing. Um, and it's wired. You don't want to have a uh, keyboard and mice that require charging or Bluetooth connection, especially when your computer is located somewhere else in Iraq. The Bluetooth thing is not going to work really well. You could put a Bluetooth little receiver in the KVM, but just please don't use Bluetooth. Please use USB hardwired connection for your keyboard and mouse. In a production environment, you want to remove as many potential failure points that could become a distraction. If some reason a, a battery dies on a mouse and your operator can't advance slides or click on the right part of ProPresenter. And finally, number 10 is the Weirson monitor stand. It's a lay flat monitor stand. A lot of people have seen these on the channel and asked about it. It's kind of personal preference. You could also use any great like VESA mount arm on your workstation if you want more flexibility and height for whoever's running it. Uh, the, the lay flat tilting stand like this one, cool because if you look at an example here, we've got a pro presenter workstation and you could see that the, the monitor's uh, tilted down so the operator can easily just see over it and see what's also going on in the room. Probably not the best ergonomically for someone to be looking down like that, but I'm going to leave that up to you, your personal preference and, and ergonomics. And the end result should look something like this. You have a very clean tech booth. And not only is the tech booth clean, but you have a robust system that's not going to die on you halfway through a service. ProPresenter, it's not the most reliable software all the time. In general, though, with the computer specs I just talked about, I rarely have issues mid-service. The only time I've seen issues come up is when I feel like the, the Mac Mini itself is maybe under spec in the amount of uh, RAM or memory that it has. And that's where if the computer tries to do too much during the middle of service, ProPresenter will probably glitch. You have to restart it, and then it works just fine again. So I do think it's better to invest a little bit more for that reliability, and you can talk to your leaders and your pastors about this. It could just be very distracting if something happens in the middle of a service because you have an under spec computer. But I also want to give you the caveat of don't go spending like $10,000 on a, a computer setup. You can easily go to the Apple store and spec it out like crazy. That's overkill. I don't think that's being good steward of resources. The system I presented to you today, it's not cheap. For all these things added together, you're going to be looking at anywhere from four to $5,000, depending on how you select some of these specific recommendations that I gave you. But remember, you can start on a lower budget and you don't really need to have all these components immediately. You don't really need to rack mount your computer if it just doesn't make sense for your space and your budget and sort of the level of professionalism you're going for. But like I said, for a lot of mid to larger size churches, maybe you have an auditorium of like, 
three to 500 people. You're starting to feel the growing pains of the growing ministry and, and the AV demands are, are increasing. People want to have more video feeds going everywhere. They want it to be reliable. That's when you want to explore a more professional solution like this one. Hope you found this video helpful today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more tips for building systems like this for your church. Go to churchfront.com today to learn more about the resources we have for you and sign up to be a premium member. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.